Welcome to this overview of the Highway Capacity Analysis webinar series. This series looks at the Highway Capacity Manual, the new sixth edition that's been out for about a year and a half, and Highway Capacity Software Release 7 that implements those procedures. It also looks a little bit further back to the 2010 versions just to lay the backdrop for the changes made in the 6th edition. My name is Bill Sampson. I'm with the University of Florida. I run the McTran Center and the T-Square Center here. Uh, there's my contact information if you have questions after this overview. We plan to run this uh, 1 to 4 Eastern time, 4 consecutive days for a total of 12 hours, essentially a, a two-day training course. And there's uh, 12 PDHs uh, provided as a certificate emailed to you after this is over. We do these webinars using Adobe Connect, and we don't ask for video or audio from the participants, but uh, reply to questions and comments that are typed into the chat, chat area. We usually just do that verbally. So here's kind of the agenda. We're going to look at the the overview of the 2010 and the 6th edition of the manual, including those major changes. And then within the training course, we're going to go into each chapter uh, uh, in some detail, starting with the most widely used chapter, probably the most complicated chapter, signalized intersections. And then move into urban streets where multiple signals are combined into an arterial analysis as an urban street freeway uh, facility and ramp terminals and alternative intersections, ramp terminals being the two signals that control the ramps to and from a freeway onto the arterial, alternative intersections including a diverging diamond, restricted crossing U-turn, um, um, median U-turn intersection, and a displaced left turn intersection. And after each computational chapter, we'll, we'll bring up software and let you look at how that chapter is implemented in software. So that after you understand the procedures, then, then what you put into the software uh, makes a lot more sense. You know what to put in, you know what the report says. So I think it's important to show what the tool is that you're going to actually use in practice. Then we move on to unsignalized intersections for two-way stop control, always stop control, and roundabouts, including roundabout segments with the new edition of the manual. Then freeways, basic freeway segments, weaving segments, merge and diverge segments, and strung together into a freeway facility. Multi-lane highways and two-lane highways. And again, we're going to demonstrate the HCS chapter by chapter with each of the appropriate modules following the, the slides. Focusing on the HCM uh, methodology because of understanding is, is very important even if you're running this in software, but making sure to show you the software and get you comfortable with starting to use the software because that's how it will be applied. The organization of the manual did not change in the 6th edition. It changed dramatically in 2010 going to three volumes with a fourth volume online. Millions of dollars in research leading up to the 2010 and the 6th edition of the manual. Again, I mentioned the alternative intersections is a major change in the 6th edition. Another major change is something called travel time reliability, where we look at uh, not just a 15-minute analysis period, which is typical, but as many analysis scenarios across the year as you may want. 520 might cover 260 workdays for the AM and PM peak, and look at the distribution of something called travel time index, and then through the procedures step by step. The Highway Capacity Manual is implemented faithfully in the Highway Capacity software. We've been doing this for about 30 years at McTrans, and we, we stay faithful to the manual. And when changes are made by the committee, the Highway Capacity and Quality Service Committee, we make them immediately to the software and you download an update. So we keep it totally current and totally faithful to the manual been participating with this committee about the same amount of time, and they are responsible for the Highway Capacity Manual and its evolution. So I'm just going to bounce to these next slides very quickly. I don't want to get into too much detail in this overview, but in signalized intersections in 2010, we finally recognized NEMA control signals, which is a big change, but probably even a bigger change is the ability to predict uh, phase duration for actuated phases. You need to know how long the actuated phase is on average 
over multiple cycles in a 15 minute period in order to compute capacity from saturation flow. A couple of defaults provided for saturation flow. The D1 uh, uh, uniform delay equation was improved. Pedestrian bicycle level of service added. In the sixth edition, what we call free rights or unsignalized movements are now included in the averages for signalized intersections. Uh, the heavy vehicle and grade factor was updated in the saturation flow adjustments. Work zones approaching the signal are now modeled. Auxiliary through lanes uh, generate the lane utilization adjustment factor for those particular designs. And the X sub C and planning method were restored uh, from the 2000 manual. In urban streets, the arrival pro flow profile is very, very important to get proportion arriving on green downstream. It's much better than this guess we use called arrival type. And so this models the platoon from one signal to the next in very much detail, so we know what happens downstream. Of course, the more arriving on green, the more who have zero delay and better the intersection works. So knowing that proportion arriving on green is extremely important. Another big update was mid-block access points. If you've ever timed signals, you know that coordinating signals uh, runs into a real problem with that people turning in and out of side streets between the signals, slowing the platoon down and breaking it up into pieces. And also multimodal level of service. Pedestrian, bicycle, and transit level of service value, uh, values computed in an urban street. This is a perfect model for comparing the trade-offs or quantifying the trade-offs uh, between a typical installation or uh, operation and a complete streets modification or a road diet. <clears throat> in the sixth edition, some, some minor changes to the base free flow speed cal calculations. Two bigger changes where if you have a mid-segment lane blockage, or you'll see in a moment, uh, a cue from the upstream signal, the inability for traffic to enter the segment between signals is modeled now. Average travel speed determines the level of service, and again, you have multimodal level of service averages across the facility. You can get a facility-wide level of service, and uh, the sustained spillback I just mentioned, and also travel time reliability for urban streets is included in the sixth edition. Basically, travel time reliability is looking at a, at a, a generating hundreds of scenarios based on the changes in demand um, weather, incidents, special events, and work zones that might come in play as things vary across uh, the year. And getting this distribution, if you look in the lower right there, maybe that's what the distribution might look like for travel time index. Travel time index briefly is what's a travel time for a given scenario can compare to free flow travel time at 2 in the morning, let's say. And as that index varies, so does the uh, the, the reliability vary. Interchange ramp terminals in the 2010 manual was, was added to primarily change lane utilization as people preposition themselves in, in the upstream signal lane because of what they're going to do downstream and change that lane utilization adjustment to saturation flow. Turn radius and traffic pressure are also implemented when you have ramp terminals as opposed to just two random signals. Control the lane level of service is based on experience travel time by origin destination pair. In the sixth edition, it got expanded to show these, these three uh, uh, alternative intersections and one alternative interchange. The diverging diamond interchange you see at the top, displaced left turn uh, below that, restricted crossing U turn, sometimes called super street below that, and, and median U turn at the bottom. So these are all modeled in the capacity procedures and in the software now. Two-way stop control. Some changes in 2010, but no changes in the sixth edition. We can now model stop control approaches on six lane major streets. Upstream signal platooning effect on the stop control approach is modeled with the flow profile, uh, replacing the old model from before. Same with always stop. It expanded to be able to model three lane approaches on always stop and added the 95th percentile Q equation, but no changes in the sixth edition. Roundabouts were first modeled in the 2010 manual to, to, to be able to model single lane roundabouts, two lane roundabouts, 
uh, single lane approaches, two lane approaches, yielding and non-yielding bypass lanes to get the lay and level of service, which we could not do before 2010. Those capacity models were changed dramatically in the sixth edition. Capacity went up by about 30%, and the ability to model segments between roundabouts along a corridor was also added. For the segments, this is the first time that we've ever looked at uh, geometric delay, uh, and to do that, we need a little, a little more uh, um, geometric data. Geome uh, uh, geometric delay is, is, if you think about arriving at a signal at 2 o'clock in the morning, you're all by yourself and the, and the light is green, you have no delay when you go through that signal. But a roundabout, when you arrive there at 2 o'clock in the morning, you're all by yourself, you have to slow down to 15 miles an hour and navigate the circle and speed back up to 45 or whatever, and that is a delay called geometric delay. Basic for a segments, uh, the free flow speed curve was... Uh, um, modified in 2010 to take away interpolation, but then that was restored in the 6th edition. Managed lanes are now modeled uh, for five different designs. Capacity and speed adjustments provided for weather, driver familiarity, and incidents. New truck procedures have replaced the pasture car equivalents in the old process. Weaving changed completely in 2010 manual, going to something called lane changing rates and, and drastically improving this procedure from what it was before. Some capacity checks along the way. With the sixth edition, those same capacity and speed adjustment factors were added for weather, familiarity, and incidents. Merge and diverge, not much changed in 2010, and really not much changed in the sixth edition either. Uh, the capacity and speed adjustments were provided. Uh, one little trick about managing access and density across all freeway lanes uh, was uh, at least specified. Freeway facilities is a way of stringing together the different segments into a facility-wide level of service. And all those changes you've heard about already were implemented here, including an improved work zone procedure. Travel time reliability identical to what you do for urban streets, except you're doing it on a freeway analysis and not an arterial analysis. Multi-lane highways uh, added bicycle level of service in the 2010 manual, and it was modified in the sixth edition to be more consistent with basic three segments, actually uh, combined into the same chapter in the sixth edition, uh, making density breakpoint uh, for level of service F45 across, which was not before. And the new heavy vehicle adjustments were applied here as well. For two-lane highways, a few changes in 2010, but no changes in the sixth edition. Class three was added to be able to model uh, two-lane highways that weren't strictly rural. Some tables were revised to eliminate uh, uh, circular references. The two-way analysis was eliminated and bicycle level service was added both to two-lane highways and multi-lane highways as pretty much the same procedure. So I know I have to went through that very quickly, but I want to just hit a bunch of little points that, that, that may have piqued your interest to let you know what is covered in quite some detail, uh, working example, pro going through example problems and seeing software demonstrated step-by-step -step through all of these procedure whether they be simple like multi-lane highways or very complicated like signalized intersections. So give me a shout, uh, send me an email, give me a call if you, if you have questions about what is actually included in the webinar beyond what you've seen here. And I uh, hope to see you at some point uh, participating in one of these. Thank you very much.